Olympic uh, challenge. So thank you very much, Professor Lam. Thank you, Edward. Good morning and good evening. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Dr. Ming Lan from Taipei Veteran General Hospital. It's my great honor to have the chance to speak here, and my topic is nasopharyngeal carcinoma. Thanks uh, to Professor Yu Zhang and Professor Edward Kwan to invite me to join this webinar conference. My hospital is located in Taipei, Taiwan, and founded in 1958. We have about 3,000 beds and annually about 80 new ABC patients. Today, my talk will be divided into several parts. And first, I will briefly introduce the transplantal carcinoma and then the pathogenesis, anatomy, hook up, and finally the treatment. Nasopharyngeal carcinoma is the epithelial carcinoma arising from the nasopharyngeal mucosa, which is located in the deepest part of the nasal cavity. There are many critical structures, but without natural barrier. The tumor usually arises from the Rusimuna fossa, it's the lateral pharyngeal That's why carcinoma is quite common in Southeast Asia, especially in Southern China, Taiwan, Hong Kong, and Singapore, but it's very rare in Western countries. There are three types of pathology. Type 1 is keratinized squamous cell carcinoma, most common found in Western country. And type 2 are differentiated non keratinized carcinoma. Type 3 are undifferentiated carcinoma. Type 2 and type 3 are common in endemic area, and most of them are EBR positive and also sensitive to radio and chemotherapy. This figure illustrated the pathogenesis of nasopharyngeal carcinoma. Chronic exposure of environmental carcinogen like natural sunning will cause DNA damage. Also, Lead to somatic genetic change. The activation of the temporary, also inactivation of the tumor sufficient gene, will cause the immortalization of dysplasia cell and genome instability, also promote the EBV infection. The latent gene product of EV viral, including LMP1, LMP2, EBNA1, part microRNA, it will alter multiple cellular pathway and also promote the cell proliferation and regulate the host microenvironment. Therefore, they promote the coronal expansion of the EBV infection cell. And the EBV infection will, will further global hypermethylation of many tumor specialty and also inactivate a variety of cancer-related gene. During tumor development, acquired mutation of several negative Regulatory factor in NF-CoV-2 pathway will alter the activity of many cancer-related genes and also enhance the tumor heterogeneity. In advanced stage, mutation in MHC class 1 gene and mutation in PI3K, MAPK, and chromatin remodeling pathway will cause the possible local recurrent and distant metastasis after traditional conventional therapy. This table shows the common genetic mutation in MPC, including uh, related to F kappa B pathway, cell cycle, PI3K or MAPK pathway, chromatin modification, and DNA repair. And this figure shows the contribution of EV infection to MPC pathogenesis. The EV infection will cause epigenetic modification will co-genome hypermethylation of the tumor surface chain and will also promote the tumor growth by activation of survival and anti apoptosis pathway and also acquire the same nice property. And some IT, IT EBV gene product will cause the genomic instability, also release some immune suppressive cytokine, which will cause immune reaction of the EBV infected cell. This figure shows the activation of nf kappa b and the 6 stage 3 secondary pathway in MBC cell by multiple EBV encoded latent gene product, such as LMP1. And this study, they collect the microarray data, also the methylation microarray data, and they found many hypomethylated 
also have a methodology chain. And figure A is a protein protein interaction network for the high methylation, the high expression chain, and figure B is a protein protein interaction network of a high methylation low expression chain. And then move on to anatomy. Okay. The tumor can focus spread anteriorly or later to parent state or superior, posterior, or inferior. This is the new uh, eight, eight, eight edition of HSCC staging system. The tumor coli in nasal farm or oral farm of nasal cavity is scheduled as T1 case. For farm space invasion, medial lateral trachea muscle, fibular muscle invasion is scheduled as T2. Tumor may also invest superior to sensor scalpels or to posterior to cervical vertebra or to the trigger structure, parnasal sizing, and that's the T3. For those with intracranial extension, cranial nerve invasion, hypopharynx, or parotid gland, so teacher lateral to lateral trigger muscle, they are categorized as T4. The most common lymph node metastases are level 2 lymph node and retropharyngeal lymph node, followed by level 3 and level 5. Common symptoms include neck mass, nasal symptoms like frosty and nasal discharge, middle ear effusion, or some neurological symptoms. Common distant metastases include lung, liver, and bone. 3% present with distant metastases, and 80% to 50% develop distant metastases in the disease course. This table compares the difference of the 7 and 8 version of the HCC staging system. Our recent study found that in entry and disease patients, there is no difference of survival in nodal characteristics. Only T4 entry cases have the poor survival and should have aggressive treatment. In our study support merging the 32A and 32B to 3 and 3 as one uh, category. And then to the workup. This is a scope finding that the esophytic type is the most common one, can be found in 90% of patients, and non esophytic types is uh, less common. And Sometimes they need repeat biopsy. We also have to be careful. There are some cases, maybe the CIS. The skull find an asymmetry or highly vascular tumor with easy contact breathing, then it's highly suspect you have an esophageal tumor. And biopsy with adequate tissue is needed. Some type of those cases with some invasion, multiple deep biopsy. Is required. We will perform the MRI to evaluate the primary and neck metastasis condition and also arrange chest CT of sono and post scan to rule out distant metastasis. For advanced stage patient, we will arrange a PET. And this study from Hong Kong that recruit 20,000 per citizen and they found 5% of them have EBV DNA positive. Four months later, 1.5% have EBVDN positive, and they further received MRI and endoscope examination, and they found 34 patients have nasopharyngeal carcinoma. The sensitivity of the plasma DNA to screen the MPC is 1917.1%, and specificity is 1986%. So they concluded that the plasma DNA is a, a good screening tool in endemic area for screening the nasopharyngeal cancer. And 70% of the cases were early stage compared to their previous historical cohort. So the three year overall survival is much better. And this image they show that it's a T1 and zero case that the tumor is not obvious by the skull examination, but can be found by the MRI. We recently found several cases have synchronous second primary cancer. So we retrospectively review the case in our hospital. We found 17 patients with synchronous second primary cancer and the age and serum LDH are the main predictor for this patient. And the most common 
the secondary primary cancer are lung cancer followed by renal cell carcinoma and liver carcinoma, liver cancer. And the five year survival is poor for this patient compared to those uh, patients with MPC only. I would like to share some photo of uh, my patient that uh, is the tumor of the nasopharyngeal area. This is base alloy squamous cell carcinoma. This is a very big base alloy squamous cell carcinoma with multiple peritonectus, make lymph node. So we perform surgery first followed by prosopic CCRT. And this is mild epithelial carcinoma. This is adenocystic carcinoma. And this is a squamous cell carcinoma with DKAFF2 translocation. And this uh, is our recent uh, paper that we collected all the tumor that's lymphoma over the nasopharyngeal area. And the most common is diffuse B cell lymphoma followed by NKT cell lymphoma. And we found that 100% of NKT cell lymphoma are EBR positive, and about 31% diffuse B cell lymphoma are EBR positive. So in endemic area, we have to differentiate diagnosis between NPC and NP lymphoma. There are many possible morphology as shown in this figure, maybe necrotic tumor or small bulging tumor. And this is a case with inverted papilloma. And this is the NP adenitis. And after adequate antibody treatment and the adenoid shrinkage. And this is a rare case, actually, it's a central scalp based osteomyelitis. The origin is the uh, mastoiditis. And we present with a uh, muscle with the nasopharyngeal area. And we are consulted for do our nasopharyngeal cancer. The immediate is zero, ESR is quite high. And also, my scan is positive. We perform the uh, biopsy. Uh, also, sample culture, there are actual possible that's tumor originals. After adequate antibody treatment, the patient uh, detract uh, will resolve headache problem. So we move on to the treatment. This is a consistent guideline for MPC treatment. And there are two main kinds of radio therapy. One is photon therapy, one is particle therapy. Our day, I'm our physical standard for treating nasopharyngeal cancer. It has less side effect compared to 2D and 3D radiotherapy. And this meta analysis already found that MRT have better overall of survival and local control than 2D and 3D radiotherapy. But we still have to be careful that uh, some complication may develop after radiotherapy. This is my patient. Uh, he had underlying dermatomyositis history. And after the induction and concurrent chemo radiotherapy, uh, there's a oscillatory necrosis over the lower nasopharynx area. And F, although the uh, oscillatory necrosis uh, progress, but uh, after adequate antibiotic treatment, uh, reepithelization of the defect, and the patient is quite well and has been three years after the therapy. And this study, they included 19 trial and the meta analysis show that combined chemotherapy with radiotherapy is better than radiotherapy alone. And also, the, they found that concurrent chemotherapy has similar uh, survival compared to concurrent chemotherapy plus adjuvant chemotherapy. A recent meta analysis showed that induction chemotherapy uh, combined with concurrent chemotherapy have better Overall survival, progression free survival, local regional control, and distance control, then concurrent radiotherapy or radiotherapy alone. And this study, they found that uh, docetazole with cisplatin or gencitabine with cisplatin had the best overall survival compared with other regimen. In metastatic nasopharyngeal cancer, this meta analysis showed that local radiotherapy combined with chemotherapy had better over spiral and progression free survival than chemotherapy alone. Although there are many uh, alternative choice uh, in assisting guideline for treating a spiral cancer, um, we think that uh, for T1 N0 case, definitely radiotherapy is enough. For stage two case, uh, combined chemo radio, concurrent chemo radiotherapy is suggested to prevent possible micrometastasis. For local advanced stage, 
Induction chemotherapy followed by concurrent chemotherapy is highly recommended. And for those cases with metastasis, local radiotherapy should be added uh, beside the chemotherapy. However, we still have to tailor the treatment uh, by individual condition. This is my patient, uh, T3N1 M0 omen. Uh, after the induction concurrent, there's still tumor over the nasopharynx, so he received a treatment chemotherapy. However, there's still residue tumor over there, so uh, he refused surgery and uh, we get him another full cycle of palliative chemotherapy. And finally, uh, there's complete uh, tumor response. Uh, it already have been three years after the surgery. And this is another case. Uh, the tumor the stage is T4, N3, N0. The patient has very big tumor, can be uh, found uh, over bilateral muscle cavity. There's also huge neck mass. After induction combined with concurrent chemo and adjuvant chemotherapy, there are still residue neck mass over bilateral neck, so he received a bilateral neck dissection. And the pathology show there are 30 16 you know, and 40 16 you know, over the right side, 36 over the left side, and actually there were no carcinoma cell found at the pathology slide. So that means the adjuvant chemotherapy still had the effect in killing this, uh, this, this cancer cell. The patient was still follow up at my clinic and there's no obvious tumor uh, recurring now. Although stage one, stage two patients have very good five years over survival can reach near more than 90%. However, stage four patients still have poor overall survival. Most of them will develop local recurrent or distant metastasis. And this is an updated international recommendation for local recurrent nasopharyngeal cancer patient that if the tumor is resectable, the patient should receive surgery. But if it's unresectable or there is still positive margin after surgery, the patient should receive radiation. And MRT is, is the first choice recommended. Another category of the radiotherapy is the particle therapy include proton therapy, BNCT, and carbon ion. They both have a black peak uh, effect, and they have less uh, side effect compared to traditional proton therapy. And from this uh, dose reposition profile, we can see that the most energy release uh, at the tumor side uh, of the uh, particle therapy like carbon ion or protons, and compared to a photon therapy that uh, many energy will cause the non tissue damage before and after the tumor behind the tumor. However, we still have to be careful that sometimes uh, we'll have severe uh, complications like carotid blowout syndrome uh, after the particle therapy. And this is a uh, my case is a T4 entry and zero case that the patient received the induction chemo, concurrent chemo therapy, and adjuvant chemotherapy. And one year later, uh, there's a mass can be found during the MI variation, but there's no obvious tumor over the skull. Um, and EVDI is zero. And we perform the PET is part of the nasopharyngeal. We perform the PET, it proved to be a recurrent nasopharyngeal cancer. So the patient received a BNCT, the viral bilateral therapy, and intermediate metastasis noted during the treatment. And six months later, there is necrosis found over the nasopharyngeal area in the area of the impending carotid blowout. With, uh, the patient received ICS-10. And two months later, uh, the necrosis progressed and uh, epistasis off and on. So we performed nasopharyngeal treatment for her. And unfortunately, there are still cancer cells um, in the specimen. And we harvest the narcissistic fat to cover, to protect the ICA. And now the patient still receives the oral chemotherapy and also the antibiotic. Uh, the cystic fat is hidden quite well, and she's still around on my clinic, on stable condition. 
this study is from China and Shanghai, and they found they used the carbon ion radiotherapy for local recurrent transparent cancer and show a good uh, two year overall and regional control, overall survival and regional control. And but having to be careful that certain patients have massive hemorrhage and they can have died due to the carotid bra syndrome. In my hospital, uh, our carbon iron center will finish at the end of this year and we will start to recruit a patient and hope can bring some hope for those local recurrent uh, advanced stage patients. For recurrent nasopharyngeal cancer, if the tumor is receptible, the local tumor is receptible, this uh, randomized uh, phase three control study, they found that the nasopharyngeal have better overall survival and disability survival than iron RT. And another uh, study, they uh, found that Gen C type in group have a better progression free survival and overall survival than rural Eurasia group in recurrent or metastatic anticipation. I have to be careful of the leukopenia, neutropenia, or thrombocytopenia. Immunotherapy is also another choice uh, as a novel therapy, uh, especially a PD1, PD1 antibody. Uh, currently, the meta analysis show that the overall response rate is about 27%. There are so many uh, ongoing trials, maybe combined with radiotherapy or chemotherapy. Um, and we have linked It's really only one case that the T4 entry and one HCC case uh, have uh, improved the condition and after immunotherapy. And he refused radiotherapy and chemotherapy, and uh, he only wanted to receive immunotherapy. So uh, during the two years, he already received a 28 cycle of nivolumab. And uh, from the injury, showed that a marked reduction of the nasopharyngeal tumor. And also the right side lymph, but uh, there's a progression of the left side lymph node. Is he uh, is quite well now and have no compression after the neurotherapy to follow at my clinic. Target therapy is another choice and talking potential pathway in nasal pathogenesis, uh, pathogenesis like an copy pathway, state pathway, and pathway. And finally, I will just uh, briefly talk about my translational research uh, regarding the NPC. And we know that metastasis is the main cause of the uh, uh, patient death, and if we can early detect those metastases, and maybe the patient can have more uh, good prognosis. So those cell saturating uh, in the blood, we call the saturating tumor cell, is actually quite few, and there are many um, methods have been developed, and the saturating tumor cell has been found to be a good biomarker for prognosis and outcome at every stage of cancer. And recently, that uh, their paper found that MPC uh, survival can be grouped by MDNA compared with CTC. And also, serial analysis of CTC can already detect of the minimal CTC of metastasis MPC patient. Our recent, uh, recently, our lab developed a novel platform we can capture the CTC also uh, detect a very low uh, amount of MDNA using just very few uh, brought and our preliminary data show that uh, normal patients have uh, no CT can be detected uh, but for those local advanced stage patients or recurrent or metastasis cases they have many CT can be captured by our platform and also my previous study uh, used bioinformatic method to query the NPC gene signature and on the scanning network and we found many potential uh, FDA approval drug. And after some in vitro study, we found this drug had the potential to kill nasopharyngeal cancer. So conclusion, the nasopharyngeal cancer pathogen is very complex. It's interaction between the gene and BV environment. And we have to give the patient a detailed workup. And the BV DNA, maybe in the future combined with the CT will be a very good marker. And treatment for stage one radiotherapy or not, for advanced stage induction chemo compound with concurrent chemo radiotherapy is highly suggested. For residual tumor or for those with persistent EBDNA, the chemo chemotherapy should be added. 
and for recurrent metastasis, local radiotherapy uh, combined with chemotherapy or special gene targeting regimen is highly suggested. For receptive local recurrent uh, disease, the nasopharyngectomy has better survival than MRT, and partial therapy may be the future choice for those advanced local uh, recurrent cases. Thank you for your attention and welcome any question. Thank you, Dr. Lan, for that wonderful talk. Um, I did, did have a question for you. Uh, what are the indications for nasopharyngectomy? Uh, uh, usually for very limited recurrent case, uh, if the margin can be free, uh, mm. that the patient still have to receive the radiotherapy and then may be cause the severe necrosis of nasopharynx area and maybe uh, will return with a carotid broad syndrome. Yeah, so if limited, uh, we can perform the nasopharynx treatment, but it it's, can be operable and it should be received the MRT or a particle therapy. I see. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, it is 3.30 and I think at this time we can break out to the, um, the question and answer uh, 